Hello and welcome. In this video, we show how we successfully tile and grout an 18 square meter room with little previous experience. We show which tools we use and what we pay particular attention to. Our videos are not sponsored and we bought all the products ourselves. We are completely renovating the room, which means we have removed the rotten wood floor and concreted a new reinforced floor slab. as well as applied ceiling, insulation, and screed with underfloor heating. There are detailed videos of this work on our channel. The electrical, the window and the false ceiling are also being replaced. Before we start with the floor tiles, the room is completely filled, sanded and painted. It makes sense to do this work first so that the new tiles will not get paint on them. This means there is a lot of dust on the screed, which now has to be thoroughly cleaned. We apply a generous amount of primer to the screed. This binds the remaining dust, easily penetrates the mineral surface and serves as an adhesion promoter for the flexible tile cement. The primer does not take long to dry and it says that it adheres even better if it is still a little damp. You can see here that the screed is not 100% smooth, nevertheless it is level. We installed this ourselves and leveled it off with the help of mortared rails. This meant that we were able to create a screed surface that was the right height even with little experience. In our opinion, the rougher surface is even better for the tile cement. We use this leveling system to lay the floor tiles. The white threaded tabs are placed between the tiles. Both adjacent tiles rest on the bottom of the tab and are then pulled to the same height with the help of the red threaded cap. The white tabs also serve as spacers. The system is available for different joint widths and can be used up to a tile thickness of 16 millimeters. We opted for a joint width of 2 mm. This system is particularly suitable for large format tiles. We chose a tile size of 30 by 60 cm. That's not huge, but since we're not very experienced, we'll use this system. We want to start laying the tiles at the patio door. We laid the aluminum rail parallel to the window. The room door is opposite to the window. We measured a distance of 408 centimeters between the window and the room door. We divided this measurement by the tile width, including the joint of 30.2 centimeters. We get 13.5 rows. This means that we would end up with half the tile width at the door. In order to increase the width of the last row of tiles, we have to reduce the width of the first row. Makes sense. So we cut off 7 centimeters here. This means that the first row and the last will be about three quarters wide. That's the theory. Let's see if it will come out that way. Now that we know how wide the first row will be, we mark it with a line on the screed parallel to the window. We cut all tiles with an angle grinder and a ceramic cutting disc. We don't lay tiles often, otherwise a tile cutter would definitely be worthwhile. We lay the cut tiles down here dry to make sure that the first row fits well before we apply tile cement. We have put the joint in the center of the window so that the window area looks even.
We check the joint spacing and then mark the last tile on the window reveal. There are no small pieces on the wall, which is good. We use an angle like this to mark the cuts. Now the first row is cut and lies neatly on our mark. The second row will then be offset by a third here. We take all the tiles to one side and mix the tile cement according to the manufacturer's instructions. We use a notched trowel with 8mm teeth. Last time we had the problem that some tiles came loose. This time we are therefore also applying tile cement to the tile. The tooth pattern should be applied orthogonally to that on the floor. We now attach the spaces before pressing the tile on. Now we can lay the first row quite quickly because of the preparatory work. We scrape away the cement so that we can lay an aluminum rail. The first row must be completely straight so that the following rows are also straight and the joints are all the same width. We now lay the second row based on the markings we made. In this pattern, the joints are offset by a third of the tile length in each row. This tile pattern creates a stair pattern that visually stretches the room. After the tiles have been laid, we attach the threaded caps. Experienced tilers often apply cement to large areas to lay tiles fast. Since we are slower and don't want the tile cement to dry, we only do small sections to start with. Now things are going well as only two tiles need to be cut per row. We won't cut these until we can measure the exact size. We are making progress. We have already reached the last row here. We don't want to step on the fresh surface, so we try to work our way backwards out of the corner. Despite the leveling kit, we check the evenness with the spirit level. We cannot manage to lay the entire surface at once. You simply cannot get to the corners without stepping on the freshly laid tiles. So we do the rest the next day. It is important to scrape off any excess cement before it hardens so that it does not get in the way the next day.
The last tile is cut. And it fits. Our last row is a nice width and it is hardly noticeable that we have cut off a few centimeters here. So all the calculations at the beginning were worth it. After the tile cement has hardened nicely, the threaded caps are unscrewed and the threaded tabs broken off. They are made the way that they break off at the bottom. Next, all the joints are checked and excess tile cement is scraped out. You have to be very precise here because if cement remains in the joint, it not only looks unsightly, it also affects the stability of the joint. Then we vacuum the entire surface. The surface is clean and already looks great. Next comes the grouting. We opted for a flexible jointing mortar with color basalt gray. This material is mixed exactly according to the manufacturer's instructions so that the joint is stable and always the same color. If you use too much water, the joint will later become lighter. We use a jointing board to apply the material, which works better than using a rubber jointer. The joint must be nice and full and is then pulled diagonally with the jointing board. Professionals do the whole area at once before washing. We work row by row and wash the tiles clean five minutes later. We proceed very carefully and pull evenly diagonally over the joints. The washing box and the sponge board are absolutely brilliant for this. The sponge board is pulled over the surface with almost no pressure. This evenly closes the surface of the joint and removes the excess material. When washing, we make sure that no bubbles or pores come up in the joints. This only happens a few times and we immediately press more material into the joint. You can let the joint material soak in for longer, but for us this works very well this way, and the result is great in our opinion. This also means that you don't walk over the freshly grouted areas. I often wash out the sponge board so that the surface is nice and clean straight away. Now all that's missing is a small piece in front of the door. And the surface is finished. We're happy because it went well and now everything can harden for two days.
To make the room complete, we'll then install the lamps. We're also still missing the new switches and sockets. Now the edge insulation strip is cut flush with the tiles. All that's missing are the skirting boards. We are able to make the mitre cuts well with this power mitre saw. We use assembly adhesive to attach it. And that's it. We're very happy with our completely renovated room and hope you enjoyed the video. You can also find the materials and tools used in the video description. We wish you much success with your projects and look forward to next time. So thank you for watching and see you soon.